And so the pragmatists then are much more in keeping and sympathetic to the realist project of saying, we're interested in the natural world. How do we come to know the natural world? Well, we use our senses. On the basis of our senses, we start to classify things. We come up with hypotheses. We run experiments. There's lots of trial and error. And then we come up with theories that seem to be uh, good, good, uh, good representations or good explanatory accounts of the way the phenomena seem to be going in, in the real world. And so they will say, yeah, we are fans of uh, scientific method, but if we look at scientific method, uh, scientific method has two major sources of fallibility. So if we say that the scientific method really is fundamentally based on observation, right, that we start by observing the world, and then on the basis of that, we then go on to do various sorts of analytic and logical techniques all right, just using these broadly to include uh, mathematics and uh, theory construction, right, and so forth. It's a sophisticated interplay of observation and, and, uh, and logic. So we might observe something, uh, then form a hypothesis, uh, and then we'll logically derive some sort of experiment that would yield a, a, a prediction that we could then test. We'll run the experiment. The experiment will yield some observations, and then we will use that observation uh, for and against uh, 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 logically the, uh, the thing that we derived hypothetically here earlier on. And what the pragmatists will do is take more seriously skeptical criticisms about logic and skeptical criticisms of observation than the realists will do. They'll point out, for example, as many philosophers had done before, that observation, for example, uh, is, is a process that is sometimes subject to various sorts of illusions. Right? We might be standing between a pair of railroad tracks looking as they can uh, go off toward the horizon there. And we know that the railroad tracks really are parallel to each other, but our eyes tell us that they are converging to a, a point. We might take a stick that we uh, can see uh, when it's in air is a straight stick, but then we'll put it halfway into some water and the stick will appear to, to bend. We call those things various sorts of illusions. Sometimes the moon seems huge in the sky, other times the moon seems uh, rather they're small. What's the right size of the eye, of the moon uh, as it appears to our eyes? Well, uh, it's hard to tell in those particular cases. We also know that uh, our observations can be subject to various sorts of hallucinations, for example. If we take various sorts of drugs right, or chemicals, they can alter the way our observational capacities operate. Or we know if we are uh, sick, right? Uh, sometimes we will uh, uh, think we're experiencing things uh, in certain sorts of ways when uh, they aren't really that way at all. We also know that the senses are subject to a great deal of relativity, right? The way things look to you color-wise might not be the same, the way the same things look to me, right, color-wise. Or even just me, myself, I might know that something that tastes uh, sweet and tasty to me while I'm healthy, if I then get uh, sick, and I taste the exact same sort of thing. It won't taste uh, uh, sweet and tasty to me under those kinds of circumstances. Uh, here's my uh, favorite experiment about uh, relativity. It's my favorite because I made it up myself. Uh, when I was in graduate school, I had a relatively small apartment, but it was comfortable, but I could run a philosophy experiment one day when I was in the kitchen. I thought of this, I had my sink, and I was doing some dishes in the sink. Uh, and immediately to the left of my sink, I had my stove. And then immediately to the right of the sink, I had my refrigerator. So I've got some uh, warm water, uh, initially warm water, mix of hot and cold in the sink. But then I thought to do the experiment. So I reach over, I turn on the stove, and I put my hand above the stove uh, at a safe distance, but nonetheless where I can feel the heat of the stove. I take my other hand and I put it uh, inside the refrigerator and I hung out there for about 30 seconds or so. I then take my hand off the stove uh, or, or away from above the stove and I plunge it into the water and that hand says, ah, cool water. But then I take the other hand out of the refrigerator, plunge that hand into the same water, and that hand says, ah, warm water. So which is it? We've got the exact same water, but one uh, sensory organ is telling me that it's, uh, that it's cool. The other sensory organ is telling me that it's, uh, that it's warm. Uh, I've got conflicting, contradictory information. And of course, the point just is that those sensory organs, my right hand and my left hand, are differently conditioned, right? They are uh, uh, relativized to the, the conditioning circumstances 
that they were in. And so there's going to be lots and lots of relativity then that is built into our observation. Now, none of these phenomena are new to anybody. What is new uh, for the pragmatists, or what's important for the pragmatists, is the amount of weight that they want to, to put on, on these things. The realists want to say, yeah, 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 all these things exist, but there are different ways of accounting for the phenomenon of illusions, hallucinations, and relativity, and we can bracket those phenomena and so forth. What the pragmatists will insist, though, is that there is no way effectively to bracket the phenomenon of uh, sensory distortions and the fact that our senses are subject to all of these phenomena. They are not necessarily omnipresent, but they are present enough that we can never be sure that in any given circumstance, we're not subject to some or all of them. And certainly, we cannot be sure, given that science is a very complicated process based on lots and lots of observations, that somewhere in that process, there is some sort of uh, suspect observation that we're taking as a not suspect observation and basing various sorts of conclusions, right, and so forth on it. So observation from the pragmatist perspective is a fallible process, in some cases, a highly fallible process. And so since science, then, is based on uh, on these, uh, these observations, science then itself must be fallible. Instead of saying it is, the result here is that what we should be inculcating into ourselves is language that is much more probabilistic, much more tentative. It seems to me that, right? And what we need to do is automate in our thinking and in our speech much more modest observational language, rather than saying it's this color, it's that color, it's this distance away, and all kinds of definite uh, uh, observational claims the way the realists are wont to do. Uh, we have to realize that it, it never actually is, right? or at least our knowledge of what is, uh, is at best tentative, probabilistic, fallibilistic. And we might have to say, well, I guess I made a mistake at various points and just take a certain observation away. All right, so what we will then have is, and I'll put this over here, a strong emphasis on the tentative, right? on the, uh, the probable, right? or the, uh, the subject to change. Right? And that then becomes uh, a deep right, way of thinking uh, uh, for us as pragmatists.